We are now ready for our last session in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. I remind you again, have your Bible ready and keep it open and follow word for word. Now, before we begin into chapter 6, we'd like to review and keep the continuity of thought tied together from the beginning of the epistle up until the end. Now, we find that the, the, uh, Paul had established the churches of Galatia and had revisited them on his second and third journeys as well. Now, sometime after that, the Judaizing teachers had entered in and were teaching the people that they had to be circumcised in order to be saved and they had to keep the law in order to be right before God. The Apostle Paul heard of this and was not able to return to Galatia, so under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, he penned this epistle unto them. Now, he said in the beginning, after into the introduction of the epistle, he says, I just stand amazed. I marvel of the fact that you were so quickly removed away from him that called you in the grace of Christ unto another gospel of a different kind, which is not another of the same kind. Now, I said, I know it's because people who trouble you because they would pervert or change the whole gospel of Christ. Now, I, I assure you that the gospel that I preached did not come from men. I didn't learn it from the other apostles uh, after I was appointed to preach. But he said, the Lord took me down into Arabia and there by special revelation taught me the message. And I preached it for 17 years before I ever compared it with the other apostles to find out if I had the same message. And it wasn't for my sake, but for the sake of those in Antioch who wanted me to do so. But by special revelation, the Lord showed me that I, that is what I should do. So I went down to that Jerusalem council, which is recorded for us in Acts chapter 15. Now he said, I'm not the one that frustrates the grace of God, but it's these people uh, who frustrate the grace by adding these other things to it. Now he said, if, if righteousness could have been by the law, then it was needless for Christ to die. Oh, you foolish Galatians. Who's bewitched you? Who cast a spell upon you that you would not obey the word of truth? Now uh, tell me this, tell me. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by faith? Uh, ha having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Uh, are miraculous powers by the works of the law or by faith? The answer, of course, is obvious. It is by faith, even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now, tell me, you that want to be under the law, don't you realize that you're placing yourself under a curse because it's written that cursed is everyone that continueth not in all the things written in the book of the law to do them? Now, also we must recognize that Christ is the one who redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it's also written in the Old Testament scriptures, cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. But then you ask the question, why the law? Why was the law given? Because of transgressions, and it was given till the seed should come. And that seed, singular, is Christ. Now when Christ is come, then we're no longer under the law, no longer under the schoolmaster. Now a child... As an illustration Paul gives here, as a, a child may be the heir of all things from his father, but as long as he is a child, he's no different from a bond slave. Till the appointed time, which is appointed by the father, that he has becomes a full-grown son. So the same is true with us. When we were under the law, we were in bondage. We, we did not have those things that could not take them. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made or born of a woman, uh, and made under the law, born under the law, in order to redeem them under the law that we might receive the placing of sons. So brethren, I plead with you, be as I am, that is, apart from law, because I became as you are, that is, as Gentiles without law, now tell me, you that want to be under the law, don't you hear what that law says? Don't you understand what the law is saying to you? It said that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondwoman and one by a free woman. Now the one by the bondwoman, uh, who was Hagar, and Ishmael was born to her, that corresponds to this law in Mount Sinai. But now he says, what does the scripture say about this? The scripture says, Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So therefore, stand fast. 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or the freedom whereby Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled or held ensnared again with the yoke of bondage. Don't yield yourself to those things. And furthermore, he says, uh, For brethren, ye have been called upon the basis of liberty or freedom. Now, don't be entangled again with these things because we've been made free in Christ. So he says, ye have been called upon the basis of liberty or freedom. Only use, that, use not that liberty or, or freedom for an occasion to the flesh to satisfy its passionate cravings and lustful desires. But contrariwise, by means of or through love, that is a high valuing upon God and fellow man, serve one another. That is, serve one another as a bond slave. Why is that true? Because all the law, the whole law, the entirety of the law of God is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt highly, any, highly value anyone you come in contact with as much as you do yourself. But, contrary to that, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one under another. Now this I say, here's what I want to say to you then. Walk or order your behavior in the Spirit. Order your behavior, lift your life in the Spirit of God who came into you, which you received by faith. And you should not by no means in any wise fulfill the desires of the flesh.